but I'm dealing with hi Joseph hi Joseph you may be seated you may be seated hi Joseph we've been talking about this interesting gentleman I've done a whole book on him if you don't have a copy please get a copy hi Joseph now the first thing we also saw about Joseph as far as his life was concerned was the fact that he was faithful the guy was faithful where he went he was faithful you give him a job he does it exactly he, he, he went through all the things that needed to be, to, be, to be taken through. I mean, he never said that the guy stuck to his assignment. Faithful. Genesis 39 verse 6 is interesting. See what? So Potiphar gave Joseph complete administrative responsibility over everything he owned. Complete administrative responsibility over everything that he owned. With Joseph there, he did not worry about things except what kind of food to eat. This is a serious statement. With Joseph there, he did not worry about anything. The only thing he worried about was what food to eat. Because Joseph was in charge. Can I ask you a question? When they put you in charge of something, will your boss still be worried? Now, there's a deep statement we just read. He didn't need to worry about anything except what kind of food to eat. Joseph was a very handsome, handsome and well-built young man. Let's leave that one. The well-built too is another thing we'll talk about later. It means Joseph was not just thinking spirit but he was thinking physical he was well built when we say somebody's well built it means he was healthy would you, you need to be faithful in life the same chapter 39 let's do the verse number 10 let's do verse number 10 she kept putting pressure on joseph day after day but he refused to sleep with her and he kept out of her way as much as possible now another thing faithfulness does is faithfulness is when you have a particular rule and regulation or there is something you have set your heart to do and you hold on to it nothing changes your mind now the bible says he was putting pressure on joseph day after day every day but because joseph was faithful not just to the people he was working with but he was faithful to god faithfulness to god he says i have made up my mind that this is the way and i'm not going to deviate from it he stuck to it joseph was faithful even to prison genesis chapter 40 1 to 4 genesis chapter 40 the verse number 1 to 4 so time later pharaoh pharaoh's chief cupbearer and chief baker offended their royal master Pharaoh became angry with these two officials and put them in the prison where Joseph was in the palace of the captain of the guard. They remained in prison for quite some time and the captain of the guard assigned them to Joseph to look after them. Joseph was a prisoner and he was giving some people who were also brought to the prison and his assignment at this point in time was to take care of them right inside the prison. And you could see the guy still exhibiting faithfulness. He did it so well. By the time we read other portions of scripture, you understand this better. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. Can you be trusted? Can somebody entrust something in your hands and say, I mean, though he's in prison. I know prisoners to be, prisoners to be very bad guys. But even in prison, he was so good to the extent that they could hand over other prisoners to him. I'm sure they could even give the doors of the, the key to the prison to him that keep it and he will still keep it. Faithfulness is very key. You need to be faithful if you want to find success in life. Let's move on to the next thing. Today I'll trust God to do a good time. Number two thing. This is an extension of what we did but then this is more spiritual. Joseph was not just faithful but he had faith. Faith. Trust me. It is not possible to survive on planet earth without faith. And some way, somehow, every one of us has a big, some form of faith. How many of you know this morning you have exercised one great faith? How many of you know? I'll show you. You entered this place and you, they walked you to a chair and you sat on the chair. You didn't even check if the legs were broken or not. What if you fell now? But you believe that they have put things in place and nobody will give you any problem, so you sat down. Some of you, even from your house to this place, you came with a taxi, you came with Uber, 
you came with your car. But when you got into that taxi, you have heard before that there are some criminals in town that have messed up the lives of people in Uber, yet you sat in that Uber without fear. You have heard how some people stole some things or, or they, they, they messed up some guys and, and carried their phones and their money in a taxi, yet you sat in a taxi. You need faith. Joseph was a man of faith. And Joseph's own level of faith was crazy. Give me Exodus. Let me show you something there. Exodus chapter, 9, chapter 13, verse 19. Exodus 13, 19. And then we'll get back to Genesis again. I just want to quickly go and show you. Joseph's faith was heavy. Right from his childhood, he believed in dreams. You know, how many of you know that children dream a lot? But they don't bother to tell anybody. Few of them will come and tell you their dreams. But, you know, dreams are normal. And, and some of us, we dream all kinds of dreams. People have dreams. I used to, I've mentioned this thing, I used to have one church member. Those days, we were having church in my house. Immediately, we closed church. My, myself and the other young pastors that we, we called a dreamer. Then Ebenezer will hit and say, dream about, dream about. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. So for, my son, they you. And when she begins a dream, Jake Menes and they, he said, I, I had a dream and I saw Jagu. And Jagu took me to Antony. So those of you, <laughs> and he said, Antony, and then, then he says, Antony took me to one, one Shaka. So Shaka brought the lady and then they started singing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Indian movie. Can dream said I had a dream and 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 Zach Oji came to my house and then introduced Genevieve Naji. <laughs> you dreamt and it was bad and you don't care you don't even pray about it. but a little boy had the dream at 17 and he believed in that dream told his brothers the dream and you know his brothers were smart enough to interpret the dream to him he said do you mean you are going to be head over us lord over us his father said the same when he had he saw the moon the stars and the sun he saw them bowing his father told, so do you mean your mother and your father and all your brothers are going to be bowing to you is that what you think that is dream now i'm driving at something here joseph had a dream but he had faith in that dream you dreamt and you saw yourself though you don't even have an ordinary passport picture let alone to get a passport and you dreamt and you saw yourself having meetings with, with, with some white guys somewhere in, in Washington, D.C. And you were having fun. You saw yourself on the flight and you woke up and it's normal. But Joseph had faith. He believed in the dream. He told his brothers. He told his father. He kept the dream to himself. Believing God that one day that dream will come to pass. And there is something Joseph did here which was reported. Let me show you quickly. Moses took the bones of Joseph with him. For Joseph had made the sons of Israel swear to this. He said, God will certainly come to help you. It's, a very, it's, it's one of the deepest statements I've read in scripture. He says, God will certainly come to help you. When he does, you must take my bones with you to the place. Do you know what he was saying? He says, there is a promise that was given to our forefather Abraham. That one day the people of Israel shall settle on the promised land. Unfortunately for me, I never had the privilege and the opportunity to see the manifestation of that day. But now that I'm dying, I believe that even if I am dead, the word of God shall come to pass. So I wanted to keep my bones. So one day when you are going to the promised land, please let my bones go and enjoy the promised land. I don't want to be buried in the land of Egypt. This was a man of faith. This was a man that believed that if God said it, he would do it. I came here to announce to somebody if you want to find success in life, never you leave your faith. It will be long, we know. And the road will be muddy and rough, but we'll get there. Heaven knows how we will get there. We know we will. Say it will be long. We know. Do I have believers here? Emerald. 
you can sit down and enjoy but those of us who are millionaires hey, say have him knows how we will get say we know we will lift your hands we are going have him knows where we are going Be a faith song. So we will care. Heaven knows how we will care. So we know we will. Are you ready to move? Let's go and say it will be long. We know. And the road will be muddy and rough. Who are getting there? Heaven knows how we will care. Why are you? 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 Why Why are you? Why are you? Why are you? Why are your house, why are you? In care, why are you? Come on, why are 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 why One day, one day, the rest of us will sit in our 10,000 seater auditorium. You realize that today I'm dealing with the word F. Joseph knew how to fit in. Joseph knew how to fit in. So number one, he was faithful. Number two, he had faith. Number three, he knew how to fit in. And this I was telling a group, I was speaking on University of Cam- Legon, um, University of Ghana campus, Legon, just yesterday, and I was, I was teaching some of these few things. I was telling, learn to adjust in life few minutes ago i was a driver not long ago i was part of the congregation just the next few minutes after i am the one speaking to the congregation few minutes ago you were the one that was leading me now i'm leading you don't be stuck in a position just because you have the privilege to be called honorable for a moment doesn't mean you are honorable anywhere no matter how big you are the the, the president of ghana he's a big man they serve him they do all things for him but the last time i checked when you are going to sit on your throne nobody sits there for you you didn't get that one think about it nobody can do that thing for you that thing when you squeeze your face and you're alone at times if there is a mirror in front of you, hey, you face me. <laughs> you yourself you look at the face and this is not my face so <laughs> Do you know why I'm talking this way? Joseph was treated with exception in his father's house. The guy's suit alone was a designer wear. His father loved him. Treated with, with, with so much care. And yet one day he was carried out of town. Sold out. That Daba sold out. Found himself 17 year old boy in another country. You know, there are people who can't just adjust. Somebody told me a story of one dad about guy. He was playing around with the Zongo boys, the, the rough guys, and they were smoking. And the police did the swoop and they, they arrested all of them. They got this guy and took him to the police station. Then he was, everybody was calm. You know, they, they are used to it. I'm one man, wait a minute. So it's regular. So they were in there sitting down. And they said, I need to call my dad. I need to talk to my dad. You, you, you guys, you can keep me here. I'm the one need to say, eh. There was one guy who has been in, in that cell for a long time. He said, you need to do what? He said, I need a phone to call my dad. So he came right behind him and gave him a good slap. Why? You know, there is a slap when, when it hits you hard. You hear a sound. Then he asked the guy, is it ringing? <laughs> <laughs> is your dad picking the call? <laughs> you see some of the presidents go and ask Mandela of blessed memory in prison many years. And he was still calm knowing that i'll come out one day fit in learn to adjust don't be plastic 
That is a word. Don't be plastic. Be the type that can be molded into every shape. Be like water. If they put you in glass and put you in the fridge, you take the shape of the glass. I've told you my story. We're buying plastic chairs. I was with Linda and me many years ago. Those days we were using plastic chairs here. Somebody came to hit me at the back. I said, why? He said, you two me. Who are you? Said, ah, but you just hit me. Do you know me? He said, if I don't know, who are you? And he said it in G. Ah, the way you want to make gas. The th- uh, this guy just struck me on the back. I have not nothing to him. So why are you talking? But after some time, I sat there and started thinking about. I said, "I quit asking my no crew. I'm in my Learn to adjust. Joseph adjusted, and that is what helped him. So he told his brothers the other day, "Don't get bothered. All these things are part of the plan. You know, because God is taking you somewhere, He will take you through different junctions of life before you arrive at that final position. So you need to learn to adjust. You don't know where He will be taking you. It's part of His plan. There are times He will intentionally put you in the pit, and you have to stay calm, adjust to it. He will carry you out of the pit and put you in Potiphar's house. All of a sudden, you were that about you were in a pit, you were a slave boy. Suddenly, you are now serving in the house. They are sending you around. When those days you were sending other people around because there were slaves around, you still had to adjust. They carry you, they now put you in prison. First time people begin to slap you, do what just adjust, knowing that it's just a matter of time. Number four. One of the things that got Joseph working and rising was he was forgiven. The guy was forgiven. Let's do Genesis chapter 15, 15 to 21. Genesis chapter 50, Genesis 5, 0, 15 to 21. But now that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers became fearful. Now Joseph was slow. He says, now Joseph will show his anger and pay us back for all the wrongs we did him, they said. So, they sent this message to Joseph before their father died. He instructed us. Did I get it right? So to you, please forgive. Forgive your brothers for the great wrong we, they did you for their sin is treating you so cruelly. So we, the servants of God, servants of the God of your father, beg you to forgive our sins when joseph received the message he broke down and wept move on then his brothers came and threw themselves down before joseph look we are your slaves they said 19 joseph replied do not be afraid of me i am am i god that i can punish you it's very deep let me talk to somebody you will always face some people that will mess you up remember this but god planted them there to mess you up so he can produce a message out of your life don't allow what they did to eat you up stay with the scripture for me don't allow it forgive them let it go forgive Let's finish the scripture. But Joseph replied, do not be afraid. Am am I God that I can punish? You know, there are times when people offend you, you can't say all kinds of things. Well, these ones, they will not succeed. And unfortunately, by the time you see them, they are still succeeding. One person Joseph had to forgive was the the chief butler. And when you read scripture, it's interesting. The last thing I'll talk about and we'll be out of this session. The guy needed help. Joseph offered the help. And he said, when you go there, remember me. I, I, I take a look at when Joseph was, was, was promoted and he was enjoying life. What will happen to the battle in the palace? But I'm sure he forgave all of them. Forgive. Let's talk about the last one and I'll be out of your way. Joseph was favored. He operated favor. And you and I will testify that when it comes to favor, have time. Favor. Favor for you. And that was one thing Joseph had in your quest to rise up and find success in life. Never take favor out of your life. Favor is very key. Favor is very paramount. Favor is needed. You can't jump favor. Let's see the verse number 20. Same chapter 39 verse 20. Let's do 20 up to 23. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison. A place where the king's prisoners were bound. And I love this. We'll talk about it later. Among the many prisons around, they found only the the place where the king's prisoners were. And Joseph was not a king's prisoner. 
Joseph was not working with the king. Listen to that. Let me read it to your hearing. And Joseph master took him and put him in the prison. A place where the king's prisoners were bound. Now, if, if you, I tell you, I took the guy and I put him in the place where the senior pastors people were kept. That is to tell you that people that deal with me are kept there. So what is the business of, of pastor sets people coming to that same location? That is not supposed to be it. I hope you get what I'm trying to say. And that is to tell you that God had a purpose and God had a plan. There was something God was up to. That, that Joseph himself did not have an idea. That that is not what I'm dealing with. We'll deal with it later. The Bible says, But the Lord was with Joseph and he showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Favor. The guy was favored even in prison. Let's find nothing in there. I'll be here. Let's read up to 23. Let's see what happened and let's close. Next verse, please. The keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hands all the prisoners that were in the prison. This doesn't make sense. A prisoner taking care of all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did, he was the doer of it. Whatever happened in that prison, Joseph was the one that did it. 23. The keeper of the prison looked not onto anything. And that is also another connection to faithfulness. He didn't care about what was happening there. He looked not onto anything. Because the Lord was with him. And that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. Favor. And that's where I'm ending today. When favor is working in your life, all things work together for your good.